Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Eelwood and today we are looking at yet another brand new and very, very long awaited title by many of you gamers out there, the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Square Enix's remake attempt at the legendary PS1 classic that has only been released on PS4 at the moment. And to answer the ultimate question, as always, is it worth your time? Also bear in mind guys, this video may contain spoilers since I'll be referencing details from the original game to compare to the remake. You have been more and so, Final Fantasy VII is a single player, fantasy, sci-fi action role playing game. Set on the magical world of Gaia, you play as a mercenary employed to take on a certain mega conglomerate company. You'll be enjoying the very impressive groundbreaking story, experiencing the fresh new real time battle system, all while utilising the new materia, equipment and skill system this game has to offer. So, aesthetically, I really don't need to tell you how amazing this game's visual quality is. Probably one of the most beautiful games I've ever played on console to date. Colours used are generally pale and weathered, yet surprisingly quite bright, ensuring a very realistic look to the game throughout, yet with a hint of radiance which really brings out the character of pretty much everything on screen at all times. The lighting effects are absolutely brilliant, character and environmental shadow effects are insanely detailed and realistic. The various glows ambient and general lighting effects are definitely top-notch quality with the most obvious effects like spells, explosions and underfoot hazards being some of the best I've seen from the Final Fantasy series. Very immersive, obvious, powerful visuals yet with a simplistic, minimalist touch that prevents them from feeling like two over-the-top god mode attacks which is good. Textures in detail however are by far the best visual assets of the game. Literally everything in the entire game looks incredibly detailed and has been designed with so much care and attention it's truly amazing. Things like water effects, brick rubble, glossy stones, simple tarmac, gentle foliage and especially the heavily mechanic majority looks absolutely incredible. With every single virtual inch being detailed at some of the highest standards it's nuts. A very well done to the devs here, incredible job. The UI is pretty good. I was very disappointed however they didn't implement the ability to change the colour scheme of the UI and menu screens like in the original. Very big shame there. Aside from that though, the UI is very sleek and slender. Everything you need to know in a tidy arrangement on screen. The various UI effects like indication flashes and glows are all obvious enough to distinguish easily. Very rare would I miss a change of circumstance while in combat. Other screens like the various menus, shops and more are all simple to understand and easy to navigate just like the original. And if ever you're unsure about anything, there's also the simple, to the point information tips that explain pretty much everything you would need to know. Level layouts are up there with some of the best. Large, simple, easy to navigate areas with absolute minimal ground clutter, I love it. They do however get a bit more complex in built up areas like in towns, but come on, what do you expect? Wall Market specifically is a bit of a maze when you first go there, but after a few minutes of walking around and studying the very useful and informative area map, does get familiar over time. Character and enemy designs are also up to the standard with the rest of the game's incredible aesthetics. General design and animations are practically flawless. Main cast characters feel weighty to manoeuvre and have consistently powerful and dramatic animations regardless of the action. New and reimagined enemies look amazing and have fresh and interesting abilities to accommodate the new and improved real-time battle system that I was quite surprised about. Bosses, both big and small, are a perfect example of great game design from an aesthetic perspective. Cutscenes and dialogue, facial animations and body gestures though are completely out of this world with their incredibly realistic movement that provide a level of detail that you really cannot beat with today's standard. Truly an unquestionable immersive visual quality that has been executed brilliantly for such a renowned title. You're not real. You're... Drop the weapon! You got this. Yeah, what he said! Right, the OSTs. So for a start, I do need to mention that unfortunately, Square Enix didn't allow players the option to choose between the original and remake soundtracks, which has been a very upsetting decision for many, many players, including myself. But the remake OSTs, actually very good. Very grand, powerful and dramatic orchestrated sounds used with a few custom effects here and there to help bring out that nostalgic feel. There are a lot of brand new tracks made specifically for the game, with multiple remixes of the original game's tracks to provide 
provide different perspectives to the music. And the best part, they have actually maintained that crisp, loud, very distinct style on pretty much all of the remix soundtracks, which I would actually consider a lot of them to be successful remixes. Not quite as good as the originals personally, but as a whole, they do come very close. I also like how some of the original tracks have been completely reimagined to give an entirely different feel to the current in-game events, while also maintaining the nostalgic main melody that we all know and love. Something you never see done with such a high level of consideration like this game. There are also a whopping 5 discs worth of soundtracks in the entire game which is fucking nuts. And because of the multiple remixes, I didn't notice hearing the exact same soundtrack more than twice throughout my entire playthrough. Imagine how many we'll have when the other parts are released. Everything else sound related is also incredibly immersive with the ambient, monster, character and attack sounds being some of the highest quality. I especially like their accurate sound interpretations of the returning enemies and bosses, very good job. The voice acting though, I have to be honest, is fucking brilliant. Combined with the incredible facial gestures and animation, it's like watching a movie. Even on the brief dialogue cutscenes, the script writers and voice actors have done a superb job. Very, very rarely do I feel any kind of emotional reaction to games, but on multiple occasions I did get an uncomfortable stomach due to the incredibly emotional and brilliant cutscene quality, especially during sad scenes or times of passionate relief. Barrett especially is probably my favourite character in the game, purely because of his amazing voice actor and the script writers. Overall, a more than satisfactory sound quality that matches the game's incredible aesthetics perfectly. Now for the gameplay. So firstly, Final Fantasy VII does have a few difficulty options to choose from before you play. You can choose between Classic, Easy and Normal mode. Each mode difference is very well explained before a difficulty mode is selected, but personally I finish my playthrough on Normal mode. You do eventually unlock Hard mode once you've completed the game the first time, but as the name implies, the increase in difficulty is definitely noticeable compared to Normal. The law of the game is pretty much identical to the original. You play as Cloud Strife, an ex first class elite fighter for the the infamous company known as Shinra. At the start of the game you're now a mercenary, employed by an eco-terrorist group known as Avalanche to blow up one of the eight Shinra reactors in the city of Midgar. These reactors feed off Mako, the lifeblood of the planet, and convert it into energy to feed the city. But as Barrett says in-game, is sucking the planet dry. As you progress the game, you start to uncover a much greater threat to the planet, not just Shinra. Which I'm not going to get into too much detail about for those crazy people watching that have yet to play the original PS1 classic. So once you've chosen your starting difficulty, you watch the remake of one of the most iconic opening cutscenes in gaming history, take control of your character and play. The first thing I'd recommend doing before anything else is going into your settings and changing the two camera distance options from both 1 to 3. The difference isn't overly obvious, but the default camera I found personally to be a bit too close to Cloud's back. If you're familiar with other real-time action fantasy RPGs like Kingdom Hearts, you'll feel right at home with this game's controls. You have your basic movement controls as you'd expect, lock on button, your standard damage attack button, your character specific unique ability, the new and improved combat menu, the quick menu shortcut commands, the ability to block and the ability to roll. Your basic attack button can be both spammed and held down, which with certain characters does completely different things like Cloud's AoE melee attack or Tifa's uppercut. The unique ability is of course special to each character, but just to name a few, Clouds lets him go into a whole new attack stance with completely different basic attacks and the counter attacking block whereas Barrett is simply a much stronger version of the basic attack with much higher damage, stagger and ATB generation. The command menu is obviously where all of your items, combat abilities, limits and equipment materia can be used. This slows down in-game time to allow you to consider your selection without the pressures of combat. Some abilities can be comboed into or from basic attacks depending on your character. Magic spells and summons come from equip materia and all characters share the same item inventory. If you're like me and prefer to keep the fast paced flow of combat, then you can use the quick menu instead. This allows you to pre-save up to 4 commands per character with abilities, spells or items that you can click pretty much instantly without needing to go through the command menu and select manually. Each character can block pretty much any attack in the game with reduced damage taken by a substantial amount, so don't forget to use it. Certain things like enemy grabs or specific magic attacks however, you're not able to block, which don't worry that'll come with experience. And finally, rolling. It's very rare that rolling ever beats blocking 
due to very precise enemy AI attacks and the fact that you take full damage if you do get hit. So I found it's best to use to close in on enemies, avoid the grabs and those mentioned magic attacks. Other game mechanics include a three party maximum as per the original, a huge variety of status effects and elemental damage, all spell casting still requires a set amount of MP, keeping weapon specific abilities after a set amount of uses and the new and improved ATB system from the original which has had a very interesting rework. To elaborate, pretty much all in combat commands except your basic, unique and limited abilities require a resource known as ATB. These are the blue bars under each character's health bar. ATB is mainly generated slowly over time through basic, unique attacks and by blocking damage. Each character has a default 2 ATB bars maximum capacity and most selectable abilities consume 1 ATB bar. Stronger attacks and spells however can sometimes require a full 2 bars to use but obviously are a bit more impressive in terms of combat usefulness. They also decided to implement a brand new stagger system very similar to Final Fantasy 13, with most enemies simply attacking them will slowly fill the stagger bar. Once completely full, the enemy is usually incapacitated for a short time until the stagger bar depletes back to empty then the enemy gets back up and continues the fight normally. While staggered, enemies take a percentage increase from usually all forms of damage, which most of the time they won't be getting back up from. Some enemies later in the game or during boss fights have unique requirements to increase the stagger bar. These include simply casting a spell with an element they're weak to, counter attacking specific attacks or using stagger increasing abilities at certain times. When you fire enough into the game to get your first summon materia, when fighting against more powerful enemies you'll notice a summon bar appear and increase slowly over time. Once full you're allowed to use your summon materia which calls forth a specific creature that basically acts as a fourth member to your party, which you can spend any of your character's ATB bars to use their special abilities. Every time you take damage your limit bar is slowly increased. When full you can use that character's limit burst which is a considerably stronger version of a character's ability, whether due to damage output or simply usefulness in combat. The more out of combat mechanics include weapon passive upgrades, which allow you to unlock extra materia slots, more damage dealt or increase your stats like HP or MP. They've maintained the one weapon, one armor and one accessory slot per character from the original game, which provide varying stats and additional effects for combat. You get different equipable limit bursts once unlocked per character, unlockable weapon specific abilities after using them enough times with said weapon equipped, gain enemy intel when using the access material on them to gain priceless information in combat. The game also has the classic main quest line, optional side quests and objectives in towns, plenty of vendors to buy and sell stuff to as you'd expect, but probably the most important game mechanic, the very impressive materia system. Weapons and armor equipped per character provide a varying amount of materia slots. These slots are filled with, of course, materia. These are magical orbs that provide your character with a huge variety of spells, passive effects, ability altering effects and more. You've got your bog standard green materia for things like fire and lightning spells to exploit enemy weaknesses, blue materia for providing linked bonuses like giving your weapon elemental damage or restoring HP or MP when a specific ability is used, red materia for all the summons in the game, yellow materia for additional abilities that are not considered magic so don't consume any MP and finally purple materia for raw passive abilities like characters auto healing at low HP and even providing brand new dodge attack combos for whoever has it equipped. Very useful game mechanic that I have to say has been captured pretty well compared to the original. When you take all of these various mechanics and put them into effect in combat, the experience is brilliant, satisfying, strategic, yet very simple. Parrying enemies and following up with combos and abilities with Cloud feels amazing, Tifa's endless combos when executed perfectly are awesome, magic is devastating to most enemies and should be used where available, especially during the early game, and figuring out enemy stagger generation and exploiting this to the absolute maximum never gets old. Not to mention the crazy materia setups and weapon abilities to make your playthrough very unique. Enemies also provide a very nice amount of threat consistently on normal and hard mode, with most of them having quite impressive poise, multiple attack patterns with grabs and combos, and often devastatingly powerful attack abilities. Also keep in mind without the ability to jump, airborne enemies are attacked kind of automatically. When using pretty much all abilities and spells, there is usually a short build up time, especially with the most powerful magic. And if you hit by most enemies during this build up, you will often get hit out of your animation and lose the ATB bars spent 
on the action. Very important. Boss fights though, I have to say, are even better and always feel very special, even when compared to the consistently fun standard enemy battles. They're often very fast, very powerful and quite unpredictable on your first few attempts, but once figured out, are very satisfying to punish into oblivion. Overall, an incredible gaming experience that definitely stands on its own two feet, even when compared to the truly timeless gameplay of its predecessor. So for the ultimate question, is it worth your time? Its incredible aesthetics, impressive soundtrack and innovative combat provide a truly immersive, nostalgic yet fresh gaming experience that for a part one of three remake attempt has been executed absolutely brilliantly. I'm going to give this game a 5 star or 92 out of 100. I love how due to the many different weapons, weapon upgrades and materia, each character can take on pretty much any role that they want like in the original game. The ratio between nice, engaging cuts scenes slash cinematics and fast paced combat is balanced very well. Not once did I feel I needed to skip any cutscene at all, unless of course repeating a boss fight. The counter attack and dodge attacks are very satisfying to use and keep the combat very entertaining. And with the cutscenes involving Sephiroth or other intense enemies, I would consider this game a psychological action game because they're delivered that strongly, which is outstanding. However, the aerial attacks are not the best and do feel quite pointless a lot of the time if you're immediately character, especially due to the lack of a jump button. You don't get punished for over material like in the original game, which would have been nice for people who really like to min-max their characters. The camera angles can be a bit troublesome now and again, with a lock-on system not feeling quite as powerful as other games. And finally, it does obviously lack the iconic full turn-based system like the original, which a lot of people are quite adamant about. However, the story has been told on a completely new level of depth and detail due to modern technology, which is truly amazing in comparison and the end game is at least 10 times better than the original due to the introduction of hard chapter selects and simulator bosses. And keep in mind everyone, this is only part one. Square Enix has estimated to release another two parts to cover the entire game's story. So who knows what's going to get better with further game releases. Price is another concern for a lot of players since it will be in three parts, but for what we have at the moment, for a total 40 hours gameplay during my personal time taking playthrough, I'd say Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Part 1 is a brilliant game in its own right and is definitely worth the full asking price. Well guys I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more games I should be reviewing each week. This video will likely be one of my longest yet due to the amount of content I've had to talk about for such a detailed game. The many gameplay mechanics mentioned may seem a bit too much on paper but once you're playing are honestly very simple, don't worry about it. But as always, all the best guys. Take care. I killed you with my <gasps> Oh, you need not remind me. It was the crowning moment of our time together.